Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Utah man lends drone expertise to Hawaiian officials tracking lava flows. Arizona Fire Department is considering incorporating UAS into their operations. And Canada's Winnipeg Fire Paramedic Service launching UAS program in June. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. The Vice President for Technology for Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems, John McBride, recently returned from Hawaii, but his trip was not exactly an exotic vacation. McBride's family on the island of Hawaii, where the Kilauea volcano has been erupting for several weeks. While McBride's family was not directly threatened by the lava flows, they did feel some of the impacts of the eruptions on the island. And while he was there, McBride used drones to help out researchers, first responders, and city officials. He worked with the Center for Robot Assisted Search and Rescues, as well as the Hilo Fire Department and other agencies to provide data related to the lava flows. The aircraft were able to track the flows and identify hot spots in areas where the magma was no longer glowing red but was still giving off significant heat. Thermal imagers and GPS positioning helped determine the direction and speed of the lava flows, assisting local officials in making decisions about evacuations. Drones are also being used to identify roads that have been closed by lava flows and rerouting traffic around those areas. In the next Unman Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Cole Kelly, who crashed his DJI Inspire 1 drone into the Seattle Space Needle while workers prepared for a fireworks show on New Year's Eve, has pleaded guilty to a gross misdemeanor charge of reckless endangerment. Kelly will not spend any time in jail for his actions. He received a 364-day suspended sentence and was fined $250. But he was also ordered to forfeit his drone and not operate a drone in the future. ParaZero is adding parachute recovery systems for DJI Mavic and Phantom drones. The company's safe air system will detect when a drone enters freefall or excessive roll. It will automatically stop the repellers and deploy the parachute. The company also makes parachutes for larger commercial drones, but the smaller size of the system designed for the Mavic and Phantom drones mean they can be repacked by the user. The system weighs about 3.5 ounces and is attached to the top of the drone. The Unmanned Systems Division of Kratos Defense and Security Solutions has recently received approximately $38 million in high-performance unmanned aerial drone aircraft, systems, and related product contract awards. Work under these recent contract awards will be performed at secure Kratos manufacturing facilities and customer locations. Among the many programs shot by ANN's Aero team at Expo 18 was an interview with Ascent Vision highlighting their XMATIS counter UAV system. XMATIS is Ascent Vision's latest advancement in on the move counter UAS. The mounted unit is capable of long-range UAV detection, identification, and defeat while moving at speeds up to 30 miles per hour on rough terrain. Check out Ascent Vision at Expo 18, defining and detecting drone threats on the Airborne-Unmanned video channel at airborne-unmanned.net. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Fire departments in Arizona are considering more and more how UAS can benefit their operations. Division Chief Don Devendorf believes that the Prescott Fire Department can find various ways to use this technology, especially considering that the department's response areas include mountain terrain right in town, along with other usual city firefighting challenges. Devendorf notes that in town, a payload that includes a thermal imaging camera would be helpful. Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority Chief Scott Freitag said that his agency is also considering the technology. This was demonstrated back in 2017 during a sawmill fire. Firefighters were unable to see the hot spots they needed to extinguish as a result of thick black smoke. Denny Folk, Yalapai County's emergency manager at the time, called Matt Mintzmeyer, an instructor in the UAV program at Yalapai College, for help. 
Folk says that initially some of the fire officials didn't seem very interested in what a UAS was capable of doing, but he showed them the benefits that the technology offered, including being able to fly right over the scene at 200 feet, and send back live video from the infrared camera. The aircraft was able to see the hot spots clearly. In an effort to provide safer, quicker, and more efficient response to emergency situations, Canada's Winnipeg Fire and Paramedic Service will launch a UAS program in June. Equipped with a thermal imaging camera, WFPS's UAS can help first responders locate individuals in fire hotspots, and it will also be able to identify potential structural issues. Incident commanders on scene will be able to see what the UAS sees in real time, which will allow them to deploy resources more effectively to the emergency. The UAS can be used in a number of different scenarios, including but not limited to water rescues, hazardous materials response, and wildland fire monitoring. The technology can also be used in post-incident analysis and investigation. With the drone's help, fire crews will have a better understanding of the emergency situation and any potential dangers, explains Scott Wilkinson, Senior Academy Officer with the Winnipeg Fire Paramedic Service. With a more targeted response, the drone will also help reduce damage and improve operational efficiencies. When the program launches, the UAS will be available 24-7, and it will be capable of operating in cold weather conditions up to negative 20 degrees Celsius, and in wind speeds up to 40 kilometers per hour. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.